Lesson 10.3, Parallel Lines and Perpendicular Lines. Lesson 10.1 is helpful. If you haven't seen it, it's linked in the description. A plane is a flat surface that continues without end in all directions. Intersecting lines are lines in a plane that cross at exactly one point. Intersecting lines form four angles. This line is intersecting this line at point X, and it made four angles, one, two, three, four. And line AB intersects line CD at point X. We can write it as a capital AB with a symbol for line. It's a bar with two arrowheads. We can write line CD with the capital letters CD with a bar with two arrowheads. AB right here and CD right here. We read this as line AB and line CD intersect at point X. Parallel lines are lines in a plane that are always the same distance apart. And parallel lines never intersect. They never cross or meet. And if you look at the word parallel, the two L's are making parallel lines. So that'll help you remember that parallel is the two lines that never meet. And this symbol means is parallel to. We have line JK is parallel to line LM. And we would write it with the symbol as line JK is parallel to line LM. Perpendicular lines are lines in a plane that form four right angles. Line PQ is perpendicular to line RS. We would write it as a capital PQ with the symbol for line, this upside down T, and capital letters RS with the symbol for line above it. This symbol, this upside down capital T means is perpendicular to. Line PQ is perpendicular to line RS. Intersecting lines and perpendicular lines cross at one point but only perpendicular lines form four right angles. Here we have two intersecting lines. They intersect right here at this point. And they make an obtuse angle, an obtuse angle, an acute angle, and an acute angle. But these are perpendicular lines and they're forming one, two, three, four right angles. Parallel lines are never perpendicular because they never intersect. They would have to intersect and make right angles to be perpendicular. They never intersect. They never meet. These three lines are all going in the same directions, but they'll never meet. They'll never cross. These are parallel lines. We can have more than two. We have three parallel lines here. When two lines are perpendicular to a third line, the two lines are parallel to each other. If they're perpendicular to this green line, then they must be making right angles. And that means they're both going in the same direction and the same distance from each other. To be perpendicular to the third line, the two lines must form right angles with the third line. Two rays can be parallel because a ray is part of a line. So if this line is parallel to this line, then this part of the line that is a ray is parallel to this part of this line that is a ray. We could even say that this part of it up here, which is a ray also, here's its endpoint where it begins and it goes off with an arrow in that direction. These are parallel. Two rays can be perpendicular. We have a ray 
starting at x and going up, and then we have another ray starting at x and going to the right. And we can check if two rays are perpendicular by comparing the angle they form with a square corner. We learned how to do that in video 10.1. We can take a square corner and see if it fits and makes a square, and it does. We can write ray xw, that's right here, is perpendicular to ray xy, right here. Ray xw is perpendicular to ray xy. And these two rays form angle, remember this is the symbol for angle, angle yxw or wxy, because we can go in either direction, can't we? As long as the x is in the middle, because that's the vertex, the vertex is always the middle letter of the angle. Now look at all the lines we have in this figure. We need to name a pair of perpendicular lines. Remember, perpendicular lines have a square corner. They make a right angle. I see a mark right here, a symbol for a right angle. That means line CG and DH make a perpendicular pair of lines. See that? They make a square corner. We have to remember to use the correct symbols above the letters of the points. We have line CG and line HD. Now we need to name a pair of lines that appear to be parallel. Do you see a pair of lines, two lines that seem like they're parallel? Well, if you said line HD and line FE, you're right. Now, do you notice it says they appear to be parallel? Well, we can't be completely sure without measuring. So we're not sure, but they do appear to be parallel. This one is right here, and this one is right here. They seem to be parallel to each other, don't they? Sometimes lines appear to be parallel, but they're not. And we might be able to extend the lines to see if they'll intersect. Then we know they're not parallel because parallel lines never meet. So we have a street here and a street here, and they almost look like they could be parallel. But this one is slightly slanted, isn't it? And if we extended the lines way out to here, we could see that they would eventually cross each other. So these two streets are not parallel. And if you look at this street and this street, this one seems to be a little slanted. It's not quite straight with the other one, is it? So we have to be careful. And it says we might be able to extend the lines because sometimes we don't have enough room on our paper or enough room to work to make the lines long enough to see if they are parallel. We can identify and draw parallel and perpendicular lines by using their definitions. Parallel lines are lines in a plane that are always the same distance apart from each other. Perpendicular lines are lines in a plane that intersect to form four right angles. So if a figure has a square corner symbol in one of its angles, we know that angle is a right angle, and the lines that make the angles are perpendicular. And if one of the corners has this symbol, if this is a right angle, then all the angles next to it are also right angles. And if a figure does not have a square corner symbol, we don't know if it really has a right angle. It may appear to be a right angle. It may seem like it is one, but we won't know for sure unless we can measure it or put it up against a square corner of a paper to make sure. Some capital letters have intersecting lines that are perpendicular and form right angles. Look at the capital letter E. 
Do you see perpendicular lines that are forming right angles? We have a right angle up here, right here, and of course there would be one on this side also. If that's a right angle, then the one next to it would be a right angle. And we have one right down here. How about for the letter F? Do you see perpendicular lines and right angles? We have a right angle up here and here. What about the letter H? Do you see perpendicular lines and right angles? Where we draw the line across makes right angles. What about the letter I or L or T? Yes, they make right angles also. And the numbers 4 and 5 also have right angles. Do you see the right angles in the number 4 and in the number 5? The number 4 has right angles here, here, and here, and the number 5 has a right angle right up here. Squares and rectangles contain parallel and perpendicular lines. A square is made out of four line segments. This line segment is parallel to this line segment. This one is parallel to this one, and look, it's got four right angles. These segments make perpendicular lines. Even for a rectangle, this line segment is parallel to this one, and this one up here is parallel to this one down here, and it has four right angles, so their line segments make perpendicular lines. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next video when we talk about quadrilaterals. So our next video, 10.4, we're going to sort and classify quadrilaterals. Stay focused and have a wonderful day. Bye.